Welcome back to HRNHQ, a pair of grade two races to talk about with a pair of Independence Days to celebrate. Canada Day today, July 4th, American Independence on Monday, and in between the John Nehru Stakes along with the Stephen Foster, two of our premier race venues in America. It's a big weekend, Sarah. Absolutely. And you can tune into all of the information that we have upcoming about these big stakes weekends by subscribing to our Subscribe. channel, liking this video, <laughs> liking the video, liking the other videos, all of the other videos yes. for center, a bunch of great information for this weekend, as well as upcoming weekends that you want to stay tuned now and make sure you're in the loop. Yes. Uh, lots of good stuff that we're going to talk about and coming up more on all that later. But for now, Superstar power in the John Nehrud with Life is Good making his first start since Dubai. We have another horse also making his first start in the Foster. That's a two-turn mile and an eighth race. The Nehrud seven furlongs. I'm eager to see if Life is Good ends up stretching out again. Mile and a quarter didn't go so well in the Dubai World Cup. But as we saw in the Kings Bish, excuse me, the Jerkins off the bench last year, this is a distance that suits him well. Absolutely the horse to beat. The question is, how low are you willing to go on price? That's a great question. And also, I know that you are very set on <laughs> Life is Good over Speaker's Corner, but I think that we need to at least acknowledge that this is a more contentious matchup than the Flightline versus Speaker's Corner one is, because I think Flightline is better than Life is Good. Uh, I agree that Flightline is better than Life is Good. I am. We have some hindsight here. Because flight line, and you know I'm not a big replay watcher. We're not going to get into all that. I had no idea. But I went back to the Met Mile. So, I, you know, you have a memory of how you're watching a race. And I was doing some contest stuff and very vested in flight line. So I wanted to go back with that not on my mind. And Speaker's Corner had absolutely zero response. There was not a nanosecond where it looked like Speaker's Corner could run with flight line. I mean, not even a moment of drama. There was some drama. Well, there was drama <laughs> that flight line put on himself with that start or whatever. And look, the ride on Speaker's Corner was brilliant. Like that was the way to win the race. Everything that could have gone Speaker's Corner's way did. And other than Embryo's call, which I thought was fantastic because he did try to set the stage, as it turned out, Floodline just blew the doors off him. I don't, like, to me, that's the type of performance this quick back. I'd be worried about Speaker's Corner recovering from that more than I'm worried about Life is Good recovering from Dubai. But here's my question for you. Could Life is Good recover from the kind of trouble that Speaker's Corner put Flightline in with, if, let's say he, he also has the rail, so let's say he doesn't break quite as quickly like Flightline did. He gets shut off on the inside. He's coming back from Dubai. Is seven furlongs That's his a good jam? question. Can he recover from all kinds of things like it's that? It's his jam. Seven furlongs, he's never wanted it. Wow. He's off the bench. and Speaker's corner is high as figure with yeah, the seven. Yeah, okay. No, that's a great and, question. And look, I'm team life is good <clears throat> for the most part. But I think that we need to acknowledge that this is... This is fairer. This is possibly going to go the way of Speaker's Corner more so. Is he as good as life is good? Probably not. But if this is the time to upset, there's No, this reasons. is a none. That's a great point about if the Met Mile repeats itself here and Speaker's Corner gets those advantages, yeah, you'd have to think he's a favorite quarter mile into the race based and, on what we saw in the Met Mile. There's no happy saver to come pick him up for a second. The other horses in this field, I would love to find a sneaky third to split those top two. I don't Yeah, no, nah, I agree. I mean, as we look at my fair odds, uh, I do have a feels good at three to five, and I think he'll be shorter than that. So that makes him a tough bet. I think Speaker's Corner is going to be shorter than five to two. It's a tough race to bet. Uh, I have not looked at the early pick five yet. Maybe there will be some opportunity there um, where I'll feel comfortable singling life is good. But uh, the more I look, the more I kind of am going to back off <laughs> some of the Twitter comments earlier this week. He does not look like a one to 10 here. 
I do think he is, I'm trying to do the quick math, three to five versus five to two. I mean, I, I do think he's three times the likely winner that Speaker's Corner is, but the, the price isn't going to be there. Right. And I think there's just, there's just so much that you could make a case for Speaker's Corner in here. And look, I'm not picking him, <laughs> but it's out there and the price differential and the rest of the field, this is like a, either you throw the 401k on life is good <laughs> or you just wait. Uh, yeah, won't be doing that. I, I will say, though, back to what I saw in the Met Mile, no response. He wasn't second. I'm, I might be willing to gamble a little bit, depending on how crazy the exacto pool gets, that he just is going the wrong way now at this point. On the sheets, he went from a six to a nine. If he backs up again, someone else could be second. Now, he has had that pattern before, and he, he recovered from it, even on short rest. So that doesn't make me as confident to just go against. But, you know, if the exacta with the other three are 50, 60, 70 to 1, maybe you just take a little shot to have a rooting interest in the race. But no win bet on life is good at the expected price. Well, I agree with you on that. <laughs> and I think of the other horses in the field, you got to love that War Talks and tries so hard for third, <laughs> as he did uh, against Jackie's Warrior. Yes. So if that's the other one that you want, I think that that one is more likely to hit the try than the other two. Than the other two. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, definitely no opinion after the top two, so um, probably won't be in the try pool. But, I mean, there are people that will play Life is Good, Speaker's Corner, all. So they're out there. They're out there. Uh, so th that money is up for grabs, but CRW usually gobbles it up. Stephen Foster has uh, alluded to Mandaloon is back. Similar to Life is Good after a trip to the Middle East. And I expect him to be the favorite in the Foster, but I do think Olympiad is the most like more likely winner than Mandaloon, most likely in the field. And unlike life is good, even though the price will be higher and he's not as likely as life is good, there might actually be value here uh, in the wind pool. I agree. I know that we are both very interested in Olympiad. And the way that I looked at this race is that everybody has a question to answer from their last out, except for Olympiad. <laughs> he can just run the same race again. He's got four in a row. He's got the distance, the surface, the recency, the triple digit buyers that, that are just back to back to back to back. Yeah, and everybody. Like Tom Amansky. I don't know what you're referencing, but uh, I'm sure you'll tell me later. Yes. Um, but everybody else, it, it, there's a question to ask of them that I think is reasonable. I mean, if you go through the entire field, you, you can kind of poke a hole in everybody else. And I think a lot of people are going to see this race and be like, oh, this is a really great field and there's a lot of different ways you can go. And not that that's not true, but the horse that you have to trust is Olympiad. Yeah. And you're getting, I mean, there's certain instances where you get a horse like this and a grade two, no less, where they're one to two or three to five. He is facing good horses. The, the price makes sense. Uh, this is an opportunity if you're a believer, as I know Marcus Hirsch is, uh, or Peter uh, at the Daily Racing Forum, like you are getting a price, a decent price on a really good horse. You have to beat Mandaloon. You have to beat American Revolution. You have to beat Cattle River which that is where we disagree. I know you are nowhere near as high on him as myself. Someone else you know actually picked him on top. I can't get there. I do think Cattle River, possibly the key to doing something with this race once you're past Olympiad. I, haste, I hesitate to be too bullish on that because I think Olympiad is going to be such a good price in the wind pool. That might be the only bet worth making. Well, the argument for Cattle River is that Inside speed is so good at Churchill Downs, especially yesterday. Um, what was it yesterday? There was Thursday, a, Wednesday, yes, this uh, week. Recently. <laughs> um, that that angle for him is obviously going in his favor. He likes the track, apparently. And the connections, you want to say that, oh, like this is, this is the spot for him. But when I look at his past performances of so many different tries versus allowance company, if he was good enough, don't you think Brad Cox would have put him in a stakes race by now? Yeah, he. I agree. He has the feel of like, okay, is this not ready for prime time? I think the last was good enough that he earned this try, though. Um, I, I do, try? Sure. Yeah. To do well? I don't know. Well, 10 to 1. 
I definitely, I'll tell you where I'm going with this too, because Mandaloon scares me. If he's ready, he's right there with the Olympiad. Um, but I prefer Olympiad at, at a bigger price, certainly, even at a slightly smaller one. American Revolution to me is the one where I think will be over bet. Um, he does have numbers last year that if he's able to get back to, he's a contender with the others. My issue is that last was too much of a disappointment to take as even the third choice here. Right. And let's say that was never the original plan. He finished second to Dynamic One, who that was the plan all along. Okay, sure. He has every right to improve going forward. But that was kind of a non-effort, yeah. almost. That was that was pretty disappointing. Yep. So that's I'm against him at what I expect to be the third choice. Uh, now, you said, and I would be interested in a head-to-head here. You said you actually prefer Last Samurai to Cattle River. Let's go. We're on? Yep. All right. The battle for fifth. <laughs> or uh, second to last. But we do agree on Olympiad, uh, who I have two to one on my fair odds. I think he wins this race a third of the time. And just to put a bow on sort of how you introduced him, because I agree, no clunker. And really what the consistency is, no anxious moments. I mean, this horse is just rock solid. Love to see it. I would think after this, um, you know, the Foster grade two, but it's it's the top older male race, certainly of the first half of the year in this part of the country. I, I'd have to think the Jockey Club Gold Cup for grade one would be next. Whitney probably coming up a little too quick, but he does run a lot. So who knows? Yeah. I mean, the Whitney field is shaping up to be pretty good. Pretty and, stout. Yeah. I, I don't know that they would have to go there. No. Well, yet. with the Breeders' Cup, the obvious goal Yes. You're charting that path, and he has graded stakes already. But that's exciting to have a horse that, you know, maybe, I mean, flight line, depending on life is good, stretching out, who knows. But, I mean, there's a solid tier underneath flight line even, I think. I would say so. And I think after him, it gets very competitive, and you can make a case for a lot of horses. And I think that we're seeing them all start to shape up against each other and come back from Dubai. and Right. The, Saudi and see where they're going to be going for the rest of the season. I think that we're in for a very exciting second half of the year. And look, the argument that I made last night on a uh, podcast that I was on is everybody's really excited about this life is good flight line matchup. <laughs> I don't know that it'll ever happen. It's not going to happen. Well, Pegasus. Are they That's what I think. If, if it ever happens, maybe it's in there, but we're not going to see it this year. Flight line's going to the, the Pacific Classic. And then the Breeders' Cup Classic is the goal, so they say. Yeah. Life is good. I doubt that they're going to try a mile and a quarter again. Not this year. So he's going to go to the Whitney. And then one of the Breeders' Cup races, that isn't the Classic. And then the year is over. So that's <laughs> it. Well, I could see him going to the Cigar Mile. After a win in the Breeders' Cup, would they really need to? Well, I, I'm thinking Whitney... Woodward, which is one turn at Belmont, okay. and then Cigar Mile. I, I mean, the, the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. He already won it, so. We'll I mean, I guess, but at Keeneland, it's two turns. It's, it's a short run mm -hmm. to the first turn. Then they used a short stretch, like, I don't know. And people would be clamoring for why isn't he in the Classic. Exactly, and forget that he couldn't handle the mile. Right, the so, I, I mean, I guess that's the matchup we want, but. Right, but and of I course, think, like of course we said, we do, flight line is. But where is it going to be? How's it going to happen? You have to think ahead to like a, what plan that could be, and it's not happening this year. So right. As much as Pegasus. Uh, next year, we'll get yeah. ready for it. All right, but in the meantime, like and subscribe. They already have. They already have uh, plenty of great products all weekend. Trotting horse value, Paddock Prince, our picks on Twitter. The grid. The grid. <laughs> Uh, mandatory payout Monday at Churchill, a lot of focus on that. And if you're watching this on Friday, there is a mandatory payout on the pick five at Century Mile. So for all those people who have loved playing along with the Cenoboya, early part of the week, Century Mile is somewhere up in Western Canada as well. Mandatory payout tonight. Exciting. So uh, those night races, I feel like we're we're really getting a, like a decent group of people yeah, into. I enjoy it. Fun. Put the kids to bed. Time to wind down. Definitely better than almost. I mean, there's certain shows I like, but gambling on racing tough to beat. That's the best TV there is. All right, you know it. Next to this show.
this isn't <laughs> this isn't a show. Yeah. One day it might be. One day. All right. Well, life is good and Olympiad. We both agree. Olympiad potentially the better bet. We'll wrap it all up next week. <laughs>